all right now welcome back to the channel well another day another dollar figure i'll show you all this anytime this is the bottom of my can i don't know if the picture look at that you see how clear that is see how it looks so wet a decent clear will always stay clear even in a jug like when you turn around and pour a bunch of it in a jug the cheaper the clear is the less reflective that is so the cheaper the cheaper it is the more cloudy it'll be when it's in a large form you can see see it that little bit of silver is where i had that silver in the bottom up but you can tell on top of that you can see how thick and it is see down there how thick but a quality clear will always have a just a clear to it it won't it won't cloud up on you but your more economic your more cheaper clears they'll be real cloudy and stuff like that. and that's where you get your paint job at your paint job really ain't in i mean you, you first your paint jobs in the person who has the paint gun you can have the best paint gun in the world and if you don't know what you're doing with it you ain't gonna get nowhere but if you have someone that has a sense of idea like a sense of the way it goes like paint's all about having a smooth steady hand you gotta be smooth you don't want to be in and out because if your if your hand goes in and out that paint's gonna be thicker thinner thicker thinner so you gotta have a steady hand or a steady you have a steady way of doing the whole car so when you do a steady hand on it you get a good result as long as you have the eye to know there's a key basically when you're painting a car when you first lay your clear on, like I lay my clear down pretty good. I, I lay my first coat like it's my last coat. Like I lay a pretty good coat on there. I let it dry and I go back and put one more coat on it. I used to go through and do a bunch of thin coats. I realized my paint job didn't look as good as it would if I just lay it like I'm like it's my final coat because it lays so much more like smoother, better. Everything looks better. There's less trash in it. It's uh, the whole job all in all. Turns out looking a lot better just by going ahead and blasting it out. But you just got to know where the run point is. You got to know how to mix material off. Like, I don't use a mixing cup. I use my eyesight. And But I've been doing it for 15, 16 years now. So I, I know what it looks like to mix paint. So when I'm mixing, I know how, about how thick or how thin. I'll take a little bit of lacquer, like a, not lacquer, a little bit of medium reducer, and I'll pour in it just to thin it out a little bit. Because that's where you get a lot of your arms peel is people mix their paint up and it's thick it's cold so it blotches and you get orange peeling job so what i do i mix a little bit of, of reducer in on my paint and that way my first coat there's not a lot of orange but that way my second coat there's not a lot of orange peel. but you gotta be careful not to run it because you're on the verge of running it at that but if you know where to where to ride that line at you can turn out a pretty sweet paint job yourself in an area like this look i didn't wash this yesterday all this dirt and dust all this stuff right here i didn't wet it down nothing i blew it off last week out there and yesterday most of it blew back at me because you can paint something in the driveway that turns out looking pretty decent because like i said it's not about not about how how high your gun is because you can use a cheap gun because a, a person that's experienced can use a cheap gun and still give you a professional result versus a person that don't know what they're doing can turn around and take a professional gun a thousand dollar gun and it turn around and not be quality because the way you prefer uh, the way you perform it is what i'm trying to say so right here you go i'll let y'all see it right here see if you can look see them little dots that's little, little speckles that's little dirt particles because they're clear laid so smooth so all your dust particles picked up but tomorrow or the next day or past this week i'm gonna wet stand that little bit a little bit of speckle off of it and it'll look like glass because see look there's no orange peel in it i guess see how slick it is there's no orange peel. so there's a little dust particles all i gotta do is just lightly hit it with like 1500 2000 grit just lightly scuff just the high spots now and buffing it'll literally take me probably 20 25 minutes to buff this car out which is awesome because like i said all the clear is so so slick on it the other day i painted the wing first on it if you look right here let's see if i can catch it not i painted the wing first before i really see there, there's a little bit more orange but see it see how that texture is right sorry about my hands they're stained from yesterday nothing i can do about it. but see how that is but then you come here on the trunk deck and you can see how much slicker see the shine now i can still make this look as good as that all I have to do is go through and it's going to it's gonna take a little bit more work. But the better the paint goes down on it is the better 
the job will turn out. Like, the more slicker you lay the paint, the better it'll turn out. But like I said, this is a $25 Harbor Freight gun. A redneck who never went to school for painting. But someone who's had a lot of experience painting because I just wasn't scared to get out there in the garage and do it. So my suggestion is don't go out and buy no high dollar gun if you want to do this yourself. Don't go through and buy no high dollar gun. Don't go out and buy the best of the best. Get you an old project. Pick you up some paint, some economic paint, nothing crazy expensive. Go out and paint it. And if you mess up, sand it off and repaint it. You know how many paint jobs I painted one, like my own personal car? I painted it three times in three weeks. <laughs> I didn't like the color and the way it laid, I took the paint right back off of it and I painted it a different color. Just what it is, like, but I ain't scared. I ain't scared of it. Like, I ain't scared to work is all I'm trying to say. Like, if you're going through and uh, you're going to paint something, all you got to do is just not be scared of it. Don't be scared to work. So if you go through and mess it up, don't be scared to send it back off. I mean, that's what they make sandpaper for. They make it every day. They make sandpaper where all you, all you got to do is just sand everything down try it again if you practice enough you'll get good at it the only person ain't gonna get good at is the person at home on the internet telling everybody else how to paint stuff or how to do stuff now nobody said nothing about it but i'm just saying like people that sit around and tell everybody else what to do or how to do it ain't usually the people that's really 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 good at doing it people that's good at doing it is people that just get out and do it not everybody can do it but the man that the man that ain't scared can usually do it like i got a body shop next door to me and i i knock out paint jobs that look a little bit better than his does but i ain't a professional i used to do it for a living but i'm not no professional like i said i just i'm just somebody that ain't scared to try something and like i said if i would have messed it up i'd have sent it down out of primary so i didn't lose nothing but anyways i figured i'd just let y'all in on that today and listen i'm not picking on nobody i'm not being mean to nobody i see the comments them four boy jokes, that's just me picking. You'll learn it. You'll learn it. I'm not, I don't mean nothing by it. You hit a dog in a holler, though. If I sit there and say something about a Ford and you get mad about it, whoo, we know who the loudest is. We know who it's bothering because everybody else knows I ain't bothering nobody. Like, I ain't, I ain't trying to hurt your feelings. I want you to come back. I want you to enjoy watching my videos. I want you to come back to them. I don't want you to be mad at me. But I also want you to see the sense of humor and when I say something about a, about a Ford or something. Just like if, if I watch a YouTube channel and they say something about LS, I don't get mad about Andrew. I watch Andrew Lavender stuff or whatever. He, uh, he'll slide an LS in there every now and then, something about LS motor. You know, he's a big Ford guy. He's mod motor. Mod motor and LS guys, we don't, we don't get along too good on the internet. We get along great in person. But we go through and... Uh, when somebody says something about LS, it don't hurt my feelings. I didn't build the LS. I didn't create it. I didn't do nothing. I've assembled a few LSs. I got one that runs pretty good for what it is. I mean, it runs all right for what it is. It should run a hell, heck of a lot better. But anyways, I don't go through and uh, I'm not like, just because I see somebody on YouTube say, oh, they don't like LS. I'm not like, oh, I get mad in the comments. I just, I like it and roll on with it because that's everybody's opinion. If the world was full of everybody that had the same opinion, guess what we'd have? We'd be in China. Everybody would be, it'd be communist. Everybody would think the same. Nobody would watch YouTube. If, if, if it was for everybody having the same idea on everything, there wouldn't even be a YouTube because nobody would have took a chance to get out there and make a YouTube. Nobody would take a chance. The reason why this world is created the way this world is created, and we have so many different cars. We got so many different kind of cars, makes and models, because you know what? Not everybody follows the same process. Somebody else has a different idea. And just because somebody else does something that works, doesn't mean somebody else can't find a different way of doing something else that works, that might fail, but that might take them a few times because they see the idea behind on what they're doing but like i said i just try to interact with my people not you know i just try to interact with all you guys it don't matter who it is like i've tried if you comment on my stuff you're gonna get a comment back i, I feel like it, i should show you enough respect that if i say something that if you comment down my comments that i should go through and have enough courtesy just to react to you, you know say something to you at least give you a like or whatever like if you make a statement then and it's not a question or something then it is what it is but a lot of times i i try to hit a like hit a heart on it you know let you know that i did see you and i did read your comment like i said i'm not one of these youtubers that go through and uh 
do this crap because I'm trying to get rich. I'm not one of these people that ignore everybody. Like I, I see every comment down through there, but like I said, I'm not, I'm not mad at nobody. I don't, even when I have to crack them little Ford jokes, those are just for funny. They're just to make you laugh. So if it didn't make you laugh, I'm sorry it didn't make you laugh. But at the end of the day, I'm always gonna be me. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm not, I'm, I'm a trend. I'm, I'm front of the line. I don't, I don't follow everybody else's idea on everything. I see my own little Toyota Camry view. You know, like I see my own little view. But like I said, I'm not a person who is obsessed with the LS motor. I've had Windsors. I've had small block fours. I, I don't care what kind of motor it is. If it's fast, I respect it. It's cool to me. I mean, I, I've seen plenty of stuff. I've been, I've had Mitsubishi's. I've had all kind of stuff over the years and there's nothing that like i don't put down another man unless he starts putting down me and then i, I start stabbing it where it hurts because you can't hurt my feelings like i don't i'm one of these type of people that i grew up redneck white track and my mom and daddy lived in a cheap trailer i lived in the utility closet of it there ain't much that you can say that's gonna hurt my feelings because i've come up a long ways from the person i was when i was a kid but i'm still that same old some bitch so you know what i mean like i don't I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to hurt none of your feelings. Like I said, I'll enjoy y'all. Please come back. Please like. Please subscribe. Please comment. I like the comments. I like to talk, as you can tell. So, anyways, thank you.